And I tell you that uh, to warm you up, hopefully, but also because things are not always as they seem. And uh, at the beginning of my remarks today, I'm going to take you to a little bit of a dark place. Uh, but I want you to know that that's not where we're going to end up. This lecture is about hope. Uh, it's about optimism. It's about the opportunity embedded in this fiscal crisis and about the fact that if we're willing to innovate and change and imagine, then our future does not have to be dictated by our past. And I think there's no better place in Oregon to talk about innovation and imagination than Oregon State University. You have spawned uh, Nobel Prize laureates, you have spawned C.H. Tuam Hill, uh, Dr. Jane Luchenko, uh, innovative businesses, uh, game-changing ideas, and of course, the Maraschino Cherry. <laughs> there was a recent article in the Washington Post that began with words that I think many would use to sum up the American story today. Quote, with two wars, a faltering economy, an escalating debt, and a historic partisan divide. That tagline is part of a story that's told so often, has been repeated so often, and reinforced that it's become deeply ingrained and even unquestioned in our country and in our state. Our country's headed in the wrong direction. Politicians can't be trusted. Government and institutions are broken. Our sense of ourselves as a people with a common purpose has become disjointed and we no longer know or understand or trust one another. Now, I think all of us at one time or another have repeated that story or some version of it, and it's actually reared back to us. Uh, in the media, in our politics, and in the narratives we tell about our communities. And it profoundly constrains and narrows our view of the future. But if we take a closer look, it isn't necessarily so. If we allow ourselves to change our frame of reference and to challenge some of our preconceived notions, there's actually more to this story. Yes, we as Oregonians are facing some serious challenges today. A hard-hit uh, recession, high unemployment, increased need for social services, and a very deep fiscal crisis that demands some difficult choices. But the namesake of this lecture series, Governor McCall, understood perhaps better than most people that there are always challenges, and indeed change and adversity are the constant. But he also famously said that success is the fuel of the activist. And he was absolutely right, because the biggest barrier that we face, in my estimation, is not the challenges that lie before us, but rather how we've limited our response to them by our assumptions and our preconceived notions about what is possible. And I suggest to you that at this moment in Oregon's history, we have the opportunity, and I would say the responsibility, to transcend those limits and begin reaching for the possible. 